The Department of Health has been tested to the limit in dealing with so many disasters for the past six weeks. The Zamboanga City siege, the aftermath of typhoon, leptospirosis in Olongabo City, and finally the earthquake in Bohol and Cebu. Their commitment has prevented any outbreak of people infected with diseases. And tonight we are privileged to have with us Health Secretary Enrique Ona to inform our people of its operations in Bohol. Good evening, sir, and welcome to Newsline. Good afternoon and good evening. Sir, let's just focus on Bohol and Cebu. Sir, since last week, how many of our people in Bohol were covered by the DOH and how many medical teams were deployed? Well, we have uh, taken care of by about 6,000 patients and 70 of those uh, actually needed major operations that were ma mainly done at the uh, Celestino Gallares uh, Medical Center, which is the DOH uh, medical center in, uh, in Tagbilar at Bohol. And also uh, in, uh, in Cebu, most of those that needed uh, emergency care were taken care of at the Vicente Soto Medical Center. And as I earlier mentioned, 70 operations were, uh, were done as an emergency measure, mostly fractures uh, and a good number of uh, patients that had also blood trauma either to the chest and the abdomen. As a matter of fact, I remember very clearly the boy that had a rupture of his urinary bladder mm -hmm. as a boy that was operated on successfully and is doing very well. So sir, are the facilities sufficient enough to cover the needs of our people from hospitals to medicines? Now, which hospitals were destroyed and are they up and running right now or not yet? Uh, well, um, as far as the medical center in Tagbilaran, as I said, the, it only incurred uh, minor damages and uh, is fully functional at the moment. The Vicente Soto also had minor damage and also fully functional. Uh, it's only the Cebu City uh, Community Hospital that has been totally abandoned because of danger of uh, its structure, but that's a city hospital and uh, we are ready to, to assist them. With regards to the number of uh, facilities that were uh, affected by the, by the, uh, the earthquake, mm -hmm. the total number of hospitals, for example, in Cebu is nine, uh, of which only one was uh, partially damaged. In Bohol, uh, of the total of 13 hospitals, uh, total damage was only in, uh, in one uh, uh, hospital and the 12 others were partially damaged and uh, no hospital was uh, damaged in Sikihor. Mm -hmm. So it out of a total of two hospitals in Region 7, uh, total damages was only incurred in two hospitals mm -hmm. and the two others suffered partial damages. In, uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, the rural health units, that's where a good number are, uh, were affected in uh, Bohol. Out of the total 52 uh, region, uh, rural health units and barangay health stations, um, so all of them are, uh, 52 of them were, were uh, affected and uh, six were uh, totally damaged. So now with regards to the health needs of our people in the evacuation centers, are, there, uh, are the medicines sufficient enough to cater to their needs? As, uh, as far as our daily monitoring is concerned, we have not heard any report of uh, a specific medicine that is uh, lacking, although I would uh, certainly accept that maybe uh, it may not be given right away, but certainly there is enough uh, uh, volume or, mm -hmm. or medicines that are uh, necessary for all the population that have been affected. So now, looking at the waterborne diseases, these are common in areas affected by natural calamities. Is this true for Bohol? Well, uh, we have a report of uh, something like 90 patients already that incurred uh, diarrhea, but I would not consider this an epidemic. And this is uh, in uh, the various uh, towns that have been uh, affected by the, by the earthquake. And so I think uh, as far as the report that we have gotten, none of them have really died of, uh, of uh, diarrhea. So perhaps briefly, is this a problem for Zamboanga City? And what should be done if it is? Well, we just, uh, just came from Zamboanga City two days ago. 
and we look into the situation of the uh, of the evacuees, especially the Grandstand area. Of course, uh, all of the um, necessary things in terms of sanitation and uh, and uh, provision, of course, of their food and preventive measures have been done. However, of course, that's a continuing problem because of the uh, crowded situation that they are uh, that they are uh, suffering at the moment. Mm -hmm. So um, we have discussed with uh, with uh, Mayor uh, Beng, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we have at least agreed on how the uh, or the areas where the evacuation sites or the transfer of the housing of the uh, Badjao, which should be uh, essentially located along the shoreline, mm -hmm. and a separate evacuation center for the uh, for the Christian evacuees. So I, I think that has to be yes. uh, resolved as mm -hmm. fast as possible. So now in areas greatly affected by the quake, is there a danger of an outbreak of any diseases? Yes, of course, that danger always exists and that's the reason why we have our people there uh, looking into the uh, public health uh, uh, facilities, especially in terms of uh, waste and garbage disposal as well as water supply. And uh, sir, the DOH has proven that it has the capacity to respond to any emergency. Now, what is needed in the future to enhance its quick response teams um, to areas uh, like what happened in the quake in um, Bohol and Cebu? Well, is I think uh, there really should be a need for us to acquire a faster way of setting up a health facility. A good example is when this earthquake happened, we're in, we had to uh, bring out the 250 patients at the Silisteno Galliares Hospital, or also what happened in uh, Zamboanga City, where the fighting was really at the backyard of our medical center. And so patients had to be evacuated within a few hours. So there's a need for a facility where right away within a few hours set up a health facility. And that is very much available today, although it's fairly kind of expensive. There is also a need for uh, faster uh, uh, transport mm -hmm. of our uh, of our uh, assistance, mm -hmm. and again, uh, transport of the patients to a a higher facility in terms of service uh, availability. So, looking at the transport um, from your learnings from the quake in Bohol and Cebu, in the future, do you think there is a need for a mobile hospital, hospital ships, or even air ambulances, so that the quick response teams? of the DOH can get to areas that cannot be, um, um, uh, let's say, um, that, by ambulances, that you need helicopters, right you know, in areas that cannot be um, uh, reached, um, accessed by the, um, by the teams. Well, that's actually in our drawing board, mm -hmm. both an air ambulance through a helicopter uh, service, a rapid uh, transport by sea, as well as uh, as well as a major uh, uh, capacity for us also to transport it through to ground level where roads may be very uh, difficult or maybe even damaged. Currently, sir, do we have some kind of um, equipment or transportation like that, or do we still need? Or how expensive are they? Well, we have, for example, in in the in uh, in Bohol right now, we are using our quarantine uh, boat in uh, bringing uh, supplies as well as uh, medical staff to, uh, to the shore uh, areas and, uh, and we have also um, used, uh, well, our own vehicles for that. So in short, yes, uh, in terms of air ambulance, uh, that there's a need for that. Mm -hmm. So in a final word from you? Well, uh, the, the whole uh, uh, disaster, the successive disasters that has visited our country has tested the capacity of uh, government, and especially on my part, on the Department of Health. I think, uh, yes, uh, there are areas where we have learned on how we should be able to cope, be cope better and uh, maybe uh, upgrade our capacity to respond faster, uh, and this should be, uh, should, should be possible in the very near future. Okay, on that note, thank you very much for joining us here tonight at News Live. That was Health Secretary Enrique Ona of the Department of Health. Thank you, sir. Thank you.